Hello, my name is Ariel. Welcome to Timekeeper's Data. This month, in reverence of Hoodoo Heritage Month and Gullah Geechee Heritage Month, I've been sharing stories from The People Could Fly. And this week's story is titled, Carrying the Running Aways. Never had any idea of carrying the running away slaves over the river. Even though I was right there on the plantation, right by that big river, it never got in my mind to do something like that. But one night, the woman whose house I had gone corn to said she knew a pretty girl wanted to cross the river, and would I take her? Well, I met the girl, and she was awful pretty. And soon, the woman was telling me how to get across, how to go, and when to leave. Well, I had to think about it, but each day, that girl or the woman would come around, ask me would I rode a girl across the river to a place called Ripley. Well, I finally said I would, and one night I went over to the woman's house. My owner trusted me and let me come and go as I please, long as I didn't try to read or write anything. For writing and read was forbidden to slaves. Now, I had heard about the other side of the river from the other slaves, but I thought it was just like the side where we lived on the plantation. I thought there were slaves and masters over there too, and overseers and raw hide whips they used on us. That's why I was so scared. I thought I'd land the girl over here and some overseer didn't know us would beat us for being out at night. They could do that, you know. Well, I did it. Oh, it was a long rowing time in the cold with me worrying. But pretty soon I seen a light way up high. Then I remember the woman told me to watch for a light. Told me to row to the light, which is what I did. And when I got to it, there were two men. They reached down and grabbed the girl. Then one of the men took me by the arm and said, You about hungry? And if he hadn't been holding me, I would have fell out of that rowboat. Well, that was my first trip. I was scared for a long time after that. But pretty soon I got over it, as other folks asked me to take them across the river. Two and three at a time, I'd take them. I got used to making three or four trips every month. Now, it was funny. I never saw my passengers after that first girl. Because I took them on the nights when the moon was not showing, it was cloudy. And I always met them in the open or in a house with no light. So I never saw them. Couldn't recognize them and couldn't describe them. But I would say to them, what you say? And they would say the password. Sounded like Manair. Seeing the word came from the Bible somewhere, but I don't know. And they would have to say that word before I took them across. Well, there in Ripley was a man named Mr. Rankins. The rest was John, I think. He had a station there for escaping slaves. Ohio was a free state, I found out. So once they got across, Mr. Rankins would see to him. We went at night so we could continue back for more and to be sure no slave catchers would follow us there. Mr. Rankins had a big light about 30 feet high and it burned all night. It meant freedom for slaves that they can get to that bright flame. I worked hard and I almost got caught. I had been rowing fugitives for almost four years. It was in 1863 and it was a night I carried 12 running aways across the river to Mr. Rankin's. I stepped out of the boat back in Kentucky and they were after me. Don't know how they found out, but the slave catchers didn't know them were on my trail. I ran away from the plantation and all who I knew there. I lived in the fields and in the woods even in caves. Sometimes I slept up in the tree branches or in a hay pile. I couldn't get across the river now. It was watched so closely. Finally, I did get across. Late one night, me and my wife went. I had gone back to the plantation to get her. Mr. Rankins had him a bell by this time, along with the light. We were rowing and rowing. We could see the light and hear that bell, but it seemed we weren't getting any closer. It took forever, it seemed. That's because we were so scared and it was so dark and we knew we could get caught and never get gone. Well, we did get there. We pulled up there and went on to freedom. It was only a few months before all the slaves was freed. We didn't stay on at Ripley. We went on to Detroit because I wasn't taking any chances. I have children and grandchildren now. Well, you know, the big ones don't care so much to hear about those times, but the little ones, well, they never get tired of hearing how their grandpa brought emancipation to loads of slaves he could touch and feel in the dark but never ever see. And that is the story of Carrying the Runaways. And then after that it says, Carrying the Runaways is a reality tale of freedom, a true slave narrative. The former slave who first told the tale was an actual person, Arnold Gragston, a slave in Kentucky. His story of rowing run runaways across the Ohio River represents thousands of such stories to, of escape to freedom. The abolitionist who helped the runaways once they were across the river was John Rankin, a Presbyterian minister and a southerner who lived in Ripley, Ohio. The town is still there, situated on the Great River. A rickety wood staircase leads up Liberty Hill from Ohio River 
bottom lands to the underground station house of the Rankin family. From 1825 to 1865, more than 2,000 slaves were sheltered at the house and guided on by the family. Today, the Rankin House is a state memorial open to the public from April through October. Another fugitive, Levi Perry, born a slave, crossed the Ohio River into freedom with his mother in about 1854. They were rescued by John Rankin and were taken in and taken care of at the house with the light. Years later, every six months or so, Levi Perry would settle his 10 children around him and he would begin. Now listen, children, I want to tell you about slavery and how my mother and I ran away from it, so you will know and never let it happen to you. This tale was told to me recently by my mother, Etta Bell Perry Hamilton, who is 92 years old and Levi Perry's oldest daughter. I love that story. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will be back with the last story of this month next Wednesday.